Jantron. Hey, Joe and Mac, I remember this. Originally an arcade game that became a little known yet botched SNES port made by the company Data East. Data Or Data Vice? I guess the voice actor was just having an off day. Alright, the line is Data East. Action! Data uh, Okay, Jerry, the, the line's Data East. Data East. Try again. Data I feel somewhat compelled to revisit this game. Let's dive in, shall we? Now we get our first hint of characterization here as Joe and Mac mercilessly pummel each other in the background. Hmm. You can choose from one, two, or two player super, but super mode is hardly as advertised. It just makes it so you can beat the shit out of your partner and stand on his head. Real super. Let's just go with one player, shall we? John, can I play too? Oh Jacques, you can't play! You don't have hands! Oh yes, to my surprise, this is something I often forget. I've always rather liked this game, but I have to say, it's one of those games, you know the kind? It seems like a game where the people making it didn't have much skill in programming. Everything's a bit stiff and weird. You've got your standard platforming stuff, B jumps and Y attacks. If you hold up and then jump, you do some sort of giant somersault. This comes in rather useful at times because of the game's rather difficult jumps, which you'll see later. You've got your standard affair of prehistoric enemies, pterodactyls, cavemen, as for weapons, you'll find them carved out of stone, and when you pick one up, it replaces the one you currently carry. We've got the weakest one now, the bone. Hmm, that looks like a... Yeah, that appears to be a... Uh... Oh yeah, that's a dinosaur. Seems like he took a bit too much Ambien. Turns out that guy's actually the first boss. Pretty cool stuff. It's weird, with the bosses in this game, your attacks don't even make them flinch until they reach some sort of pain orgasm. Look at these asinine jumps who designed this shit! That's the main problem I have with this game. It doesn't have that fluid Mario feel to it. It's got that stilted Castlevania feel. I think that ruins a lot of games that could have potentially been good, you know what I mean? It's not really even based off skill, it's just like, oh you messed up? Haha, <laughs> you lose a life! Not to mention, the continues are limited and the lives are scarce, so you need every last life you can get to beat the game. Well, who's this? It's Darwin! I swear, when this boss gets hurt, he yells, Pear. What's cool about Joe and Mac is that most of the game is centered around bosses. In fact, most levels are just a short stride that lead to a unique and fun boss battle. It's a nice departure from the standard formula that pays off in a lot of ways. One notable battle isn't even a boss at all, it's just a bunch of fish that make up one entire entity. Another nice thing is the variety in levels. Each one has its own art style, which enhances the overall feeling of diversity in the game. This is a pretty cool level, very atmospheric, and I like the music. This right here is pretty much the best weapon in the game, the wheel, but I like to think of it as a donut. When you have this thing, that's not the real enemy. That is. It'll replace your current weapon, like I said. And these bone clubs are everywhere for some reason. <laughs> Gotta weave through this shit. Oh, fuck. Here's another example of a unique boss. Oh, yeah, get some. <laughs> Whoa, <laughs> his tusk fell off? That's pretty raunchy. Holy shit, what the fuck? His trunk fell off? Oh, that's horrible. Great, you've done it. You've gored an innocent animal. Where do these girls come from, anyways? Were they just waiting in the wings? They could just leave, it's not like anyone's forcing them to be there. Once again, the variety of levels is rather impressive. Hey, hold on a minute! That's just the boss's head from the first level stapled onto some balls! I guess they were running low on ideas. I swear, every boss in this game has like a chewing tobacco addiction or something, just watch!
You know what's always a great thing to add into your game? Undodgeable attacks. Oh, hey, awesome, a bonus stage. Oh, cool, it got my health back. Oh, okay, I mean, well, I mean, it filled up after, like, one. I mean, okay, just, like, one was fine. Well, here we have the final stage. Hmm. Oh, god damn it, another one? Did they really have to recycle the same boss three times? Not to mention, this one's hard as gravy train tits. Tight, we beat it with half a heart and zero lives to spare. Talk about good fortune. So, Joe decides, for whatever reason, that it's a good idea to go inside this dinosaur. And awesome, it's like a level inside of him. Shit, we died. Well, we better continue. Oh, fucking wonderful. You don't get a midpoint save. You gotta do the whole thing in one run. Beat the dinosaur again, go inside, and get to the final boss. Which is a... devil... thing? What? 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 So we beat him. Oh uh, yeah. Oh, never mind. He just pulled a bayonetta on us. I really love this. The music finally changes from the normal boss music to this kind of psychedelic tone. And the boss becomes really hard. There are no cheats for this game, so when I was a kid, it was always a real struggle actually getting this far. But when I finally did, it was sort of mystical. It's not so much that his animated sprite was so amazing in itself, it's just that the only way you could see him was to actually play this far. It's a pretty decent mix of challenge and fairness. You'll probably have to give it a few goes before you finally get it. But when you do... Fuck yeah! So that was Joe and Mac. That's pretty much where things would come to a close, but I seem to recall one other game. John, it has returned. Data East actually made a sequel to Joe and Mac. In Japan, it was known as Joe and Mac 2, but in the English release, it was known only as Congo's Caper. As a kid, this caused a lot of confusion for me. I don't really want to revisit it, but... John, how did we escape? I just left. That seems too easy. I just left. Congo's Caper. You're apparently a monkey fucking around and shit when two red balls fall from the sky and turn you into monkey people? Pulitzer worthy. Well, here you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Joe and Mac 2? So, I mean, it's about cavemen, but where are Joe and Mac? They're not even part of this game. In fact, the graphics aren't even similar in any way. Congo, our main character this time, still has the high somersault, though. If he gets hit, he turns into a monkey. It's sort of a Super Mario thing. I always thought it was cool. Also, the enemies are basically just parallel universe versions of the ones from Joe and Mac. I have to mention, though, the controls this time around are quantifiably better. It feels like the programmers knew what they were doing. You've got a similar attack this time, but no power-ups. Just the club itself. I'm sorry, what? What's that about? I guess Day the East had a good sense of humor. After reaching the boss stage, you notice something a little funny. Hmm... It's like the exact same boss! What is this game? Why does it exist? If you get three of those red gems like we saw in the beginning, you turn into a... Flaming Congo? He can now take three extra hits before becoming a monkey and jump as high as Madonna's tits. After beating this familiar-faced boss, Congo goes inside of him. What? Why? Again? Was Joe and Mac just the pinnacle of ideas for them? They couldn't think of anything new? Data East, a company of cavemen, dinosaur bosses, dinosaur insides, and neckballs. Look at this boss. I think it's a girl. It's even similar to the last boss of Joe and Mac, but not nearly as cool. You club her in the vagina a few times and beat the first world. Who are these guys, the Nerd Brigade? To the comic book store! 
As it turns out, those unintimidating fellows are the bosses for the next four levels, which you can pick in your own order. Fire World, Water World, Spooky World, Japan World. What is it with Japanese games and having Japan-themed levels? American games don't have America-themed levels. Although that would probably be pretty cool. I have no idea what to think of it. None. Why did they make it? Did they think no one would notice how weirdly similar it was? And also, in Japan, why was it called Joe and Mac 2 if it has nothing to do with Joe and Mac? John C. Stennis. Motherfucker. You thought it was over, right? You thought it was done? Well, you'd be wrong. Ironically, there is a Joe and Mac 2. It's called Joe and Mac 3, Lost in the Tropics. It's nonsense. Utter nonsense. That's like making Home Alone, and then making its sequel, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, but calling it Home Alone 2. They're both family movies, so it shouldn't matter, right? Then, making the real Home Alone 2, but calling it Home Alone 3, Lost in the Tropics. Where's the sense in that? It's notable that this game is far better than either of its predecessors in the technical area, but overall, it's just not as charming. This time around, the jumping is spot on. The awkward high somersault is gone, and the enemies actually respond to getting hit. It's got more of an adventure game style, and doesn't have a level select, just areas. Also, this time the donuts aren't weapons, they serve as a type of currency. There's not much more to be said about this game, except that an arcade sequel called Joe and Mac Returns was made. And also, there's an HD remake coming up for the Xbox Live Arcade, PSN, and PC soon. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. Oh, you just left too? Yeah, I just left. Great job.